Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mytho Religio. Mytho Religio is a series of books about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mytho Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I am not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this book series, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories, such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source. And all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story. The true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number 1 and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. For deeper analysis that I cannot share in this platform due to its sensitive nature that leads to the above conclusion, kindly read the books that are available in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythoreligio.com or the physical books at Amazon in color or black and white version. Timeline of Evolution Part 1 Dear fellow truth seekers, in my last two videos, I have shared with you the history of the theory of evolution. And now, in this video, I will share with you the timeline of evolution on Earth, from the birth of the Earth to the appearance of modern humans, i.e. Homo sapiens, according to the modern theory of evolution. And we will see whether the modern theory of evolution can give us more satisfactory explanation concerning the origin of humanity in comparison to religion. This is quite a long timeline, so I am dividing it into several videos. So let's begin. Today, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. This remark was made by geneticist Theodosius Dobansky. Among others, this is because all animals and plants that are similar to one another are having similar evolutionary path are classified into groups, i.e. kingdoms, phylum, classes, orders, families, genera, and species. For example, orangutan, Malay language meaning man of the forest, which is the most intelligent primates and is said to have shared common ancestors as humans, is classified into scientific classification as follows. Kingdom Animalia Phylum Chordata Class Mammalia Order Primates Family Pomidae Subfamily Pongidae Genus Pongo This scientific classification is applied for every single organism, an individual animal, plant or single-celled life form. This also means if the modern theory of evolution is proven wrong, then all biology textbooks have to be readjusted. The following is the chronological appearance of organisms according to the modern theory of evolution. 
once again, this is the simplest way I can assemble from many sources of information without using too many scientific terms. Some data may vary from one source of information to another, since there are still many debates concerning the details among scientists. Age of the Earth According to Science Today, the Earth is approximately 4.3 to 4.6 billion years old. The scientific inquiry into the age of the Earth began at around the mid-18th century CE. In 1862, mathematical physicist Lord Kelvin calculated how long the Earth may have taken to cool down from its original molten state. He concluded that Earth was born between 40 to 20 million years ago. Then scientists learn about radioactivity, that is, the spontaneous decay of atoms of one chemical element into another. Heat is released during this process, and this heat keeps the Earth from cooling as fast as Calvin calculated. Following this, radiometric dating came into the picture which is a technique used to date materials such as rocks. This enabled geologists to reach the 4.6 billion years age for the Earth. One of the most refined radiometric dating schemes is the uranium lead. The method relies on two separate decay chains which are predictable and at measurable rate. For example, Uranium-238 decays into lead-206. If we compare the ratio of uranium-238 to lead-206, we can tell how much time has passed since the sample was pure. Through this method, we are able to date rocks, meteorites, and fossils. This method actually tells us the minimum age of the Earth since the Earth was molten before it solidified into those rocks we date. For Earth rocks, the oldest are about 3.9 billion years old. Scientists reach 4.6 billion years by estimating how long planetary formation and rock solidification takes. Geologic Time Scale Paleontologists, scientists who study fossils, use the geologic time scale to describe the timing and relationships between events that have occurred during the prehistory of the Earth. The geologic time scale is based on the principle of superposition of strata, layers of rock. That is, in undisturbed layers of strata, the older strata will be underneath the younger. There are an enormous number of strata that have been laid down over the billions of years in which the Earth has existed. No single location has all the strata. There are areas in which a large number of strata exist and other areas in which other strata exist. The reason different areas have different range of strata is that over geologic time erosions wears away some of the strata. The ages of the different strata in the geologic time scale are primarily determined by radioactive dating. Different spans of time on the time scale are usually delimited by major geological or paleontological events such as mass extinction. To indicate a certain date which took place a long, long time ago, paleontologists generally use the following abbreviation. 1 MA equals to 1 million years ago. 1 GA equals to 1 billion years ago. I'm sorry that I have to share with you the following difficult names but there is no way around it when we discuss about paleontology. So here's the geologic time scale. 1. Hadean Eon 4.6 billion years ago to 3.8 billion years ago. 2. Archean Eon 3.8 billion years ago to 2.5 billion years ago. 3. Protozoroic Eon 2.5 billion years ago to 542 million years ago. 4. Phenerozoic Eon 542 million years ago to the present is divided into A. Paleozoic Era 542 million years ago to 251 million years ago. 
further divided into periods Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian. B. Mesozoic Era, 251 million years ago to 65.5 million years ago. Further divided into periods Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. C. Cenozoic Era, 65.5 million years ago to the present. Further divided into periods Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary. One, Hadean Eon, 4.6 billion years ago to 3.8 billion years ago. 4.6 billion years ago, formation of the Earth. The name Hadean came from the name of the Greek god of the underworld, i.e. Hades. This is the generally accepted date for the formation of the Earth. 3.8 billion years ago, prokaryotes or simple cells. The cells are the basic structural and functional unit of all known living organisms, an individual animal, plant or single-celled life form. The first cells that appeared must be resembling single-cell or unicellular prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are cells without cell nucleus center and membrane-bound internal organs known as organelles. Bacteria are an example of a large group of single-cell prokaryotes. 2. Archean Eon 3.8 billion years ago to 2.5 billion years ago 3 billion years ago, the Great Oxidation Event The name Archean comes from the Greek word arche meaning beginning or origin. In my previous video, we have learned how the theory of primordial soup was proposed to answer the question of how life originated on Earth. In 1871, Charles Darwin suggested how the original spark of life may have begun in a warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, lights, heat, electricity, etc. present so that a protein compound was chemically formed ready to undergo still more complex changes. He continued that at the present day such matter would be instantly devoured or absorbed, which would not have been the case before living creatures were formed. Then, in 1929, biochemist John Haldane and Alexander Operin hypothesized independently that Earth's early atmosphere lacked free oxygen. They suggested that life began in a pond or ocean as a result of combination of chemicals from the atmosphere and some form of external sources of energy like ultraviolet radiation or lightning to make amino acids the building blocks of proteins which would then evolve into all species. This is supposed to happen at around 3.8 billion years ago. Only then, the Great Oxidation Event took place. Before the Great Oxidation Event, there was no free oxygen or O2 on the Earth. One theory says this event took place because at this time, cyanobacteria or blue-green bacteria began pumping out oxygen in the atmosphere due to the photosynthesis process. Photosynthesis is a process using energy from sunlight to convert carbon dioxide or CO2 into organic compounds, releasing oxygen, O2, as a waste product. Photosynthesis occurs in plants, algae, and many bacteria. Photosynthesis allows this organism to create their own food. Let me stop this video at this point because I believe there are already too many scientific names that I have shared and it might be too difficult to retain if I continue further. Next week, I will continue with the next eon that is the Proterozoic Eon that covers the time from the appearance of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere 
to just before the proliferation, i.e. rapid increase in the number of complex life such as trilobites or corals on the earth. For now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.